Let me tell you something. Cam Inman finds himself in the middle of a show that uh, he's got some fired up hosts right now. Look at him. And the first question come out of the gate, he's going to get warned. I want no equivocation. I'm asking you a question. And give me an answer. Not Hemming and Hawn. You ready? <laughs> ready. Are Jimmy Garoppolo's best days behind him or in front of him? Mm -hmm. In front of him. Next question. Uh, I, I'm, please elaborate. What you see, because obviously uh, he's been in a Super Bowl and he's been in an NFC title game. Twice. He's got a good right. record. Yeah, well, I mean, it's set up for him to go back to those two games, don't you think? Um, I think the Niners are positioning themselves for another playoff run. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have some uh, better offensive help as long as they make it through healthy. And um, so that, that means, Matt, yep. he's going to do well and he's going to get a big, fat contract, which would be a better day. And he's whether that's with the 49ers or somewhere else, um, it's going to be a lot better than it was probably about a year earlier when he didn't know what was going to happen to him, and he went and got shoulder surgery, and his career was in flux. So I would say better days are ahead for Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, just real maybe I'm just optimistic. I don't know. No, that's a great, great answer. Um, were you envisioning in this question that he's a long-term niner? Ooh. Um, no, I'm not dismissing it, but I think it's... I Do you think, think he's better possible. than people think, me, and he's going to be fine? Way. Go ahead. I think it's more plausible right now than it was last November. How's that? Because I think uh -huh. last November we all knew that Jimmy was he was out, that it was going to be Trey Lance's show, and then a lot of other stuff happened with the shoulder surgery and no trade and all that. So, um, and but then Jimmy also kind of controls his own destiny, whether he wants to come back or whether he finds a great uh, fit somewhere else out there, because. The NFL every offseason needs quarterbacks, and about seven or eight teams took turns getting new ones this year, and only a couple have worked out, so they're going to be looking again. Cam, forget the politics of what they, and this is no shade for the people in the back listening uh, about Trey Lance and his future, but I'm telling you, man, I got visions of Ricky Waters, Roger Craig, and it finally, like a teacher trying to teach a student a math problem, and the light bulb went off. When I saw Jimmy Garoppolo checking down, and he wasn't just checking down to an average running back, it was a guy that could take it to the house. I felt like not just the confidence of completing the check down. When Jimmy looked downfield to others, I felt like he could, he was getting energy and feeding off of, oh, I, like something just opened up in his mind. So I say all that to say, Cam, is I think Kyle, John, if they do say bye-bye to Jimmy, it's a new Jimmy they're saying bye-bye because, Cam, it felt like Jimmy had a new toy to play with and it made him or is going to make him a better quarterback. Yeah, well, first of all, as Jim Harbaugh advised us 10 years ago, never refer to a player as a toy. These are, these are grown men. Uh, Richard Pryor, all right. <laughs> yes, uh, that was a great, that was a great movie. Was, yeah. Gleason, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but did you see I, Jimmy? I he mean, looked different. Right, I mean, yeah, it, it, because it, I, they fit so well together. Because one, McCaffrey's a great short range missile, right? He, he's your weapon that can you can dump it off to, or you can design <laughs> great plays to. But the the one play, I mean, the the touchdown catch he had was very off schedule and impromptu. McCaffrey was on, like, he was just hanging out on our sideline, right, on the, as that play was unfolding. And he saw Garoppolo had, was, was in trouble, was going through his progression, so he darted for the end zone. Like, you're, when you're short and the play breaks down, go long. And Garoppolo read it, and the question after the game was whether he was showing it to McCaffrey or to Kittle, who was heading to the same area. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but, I mean, McCaffrey made it. It's just a tremendous acrobatic catch. I thought it was going to McCaffrey all the way just because my eyes were following McCaffrey. I mean, maybe Garoppolo's were following Kittle, but if that was the case, the pass was underthrown and uh, McCaffrey was there. But, I mean, it just the chemistry that they've shown in, in just the short time together, it's, it's a little reminiscent back in 2017, right, when Garoppolo came aboard and had to do a little backyard football and as he was learning Shanahan's offense. And McCaffrey's learning it right now, too. But there's that you just have to play football. And I think, honestly, in these last five years, there hasn't been enough improvisation in Shanahan's offense. Is 
there is in the NFL. There's the so much breaks game down, game. and you have to go off schedule. Santa Clara, right. And, and Jimmy has at some point, but I think that's uh, – if you can – you know, have a have a, a threat like McCaffrey where you can go off schedule a little bit more. That's going to make that offense so much more dynamic. And then you put Debo Samuel on the same field with him, and then it makes it twice as dynamic. Uh, Cam Inman joining us on ninety five seven. The game. He's our Odyssey in San Francisco Forty Nine ers uh, NFL insider. You know, I've always, I think I've got a regular week figured out in terms of the routine. But I kind of want you to take me through a bye week. So the Forty Nine ers played in L A. On yep. Sunday. They fly back to the Bay Area that Sunday night. What happens Monday? Well, um, now you got my days all mixed up here, right? So um, Monday, I believe, was a, they, I believe Monday was an off day, right? What day are we on? Thursday? Correct. Yeah. So Tuesday, um, Tuesday was trade deadline, right? Yeah. So we got an hour. Allegedly, we were supposed to get an hour of media access after the players do a little morning stretch and then they do a little workout and then they're kind of dismissed. They're allowed, they were invited to go to a venture capitalist seminar that was presented by a former Hall of Fame quarterback named Steve Young. And I think only about a dozen guys did because everybody was skipping out of town. Gotcha. Um, so, but Matt, here's the thing. So the NFL bye week, uh, players are mandated to have the four days off, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Shanahan gave them five, five and a half, because they were dismissed by noon on Tuesday. Okay. And so they got a little extra time. Um, the guys that are injured are sticking around to do rehab, guys like Eric Armstead and I would imagine Elijah Mitchell and some other guys that are close to coming back. And so they're probably around the facility still all week. Um, if not, maybe they're taking a little day trip here or there. But um, other people just getting on planes or driving down towards Big Sur or hanging gotcha. out around the Bay. They, they, it was It's the week to get away, and it's a... Time to recharge yourself for what should be a good second half run. Cam, I'm kind of putting myself out there with this question with Steiny in the room, but he knows one of my hobbies is watching games back. And the first half after the Kansas City debacle defensively, I was like, oh, my God, the Rams are doing whatever they want. They're completing third downs. And you tell me if my lab work is correct. I felt like in the second half the Niners went man, and that took cup away. Well, it kind of did. I mean, it's such a one-trick pony with the Rams' offense, right? And so they started blitzing a little bit more with Fred Warner. The pass rush just finally had opportunities in the second half that they didn't have in the first half. And that's what, you know, the Rams, I think they converted like six third downs in a row but the Niners finally woke up, right? And they got a little bit more aggressive. And um, I talked to Nick Bosa about this, too, on Tuesday. And he just said, you know, we finally had opportunities to start, you know, having a pass rush in the second half. And... Yeah, so like whether it's zone or man, I kind of just look more up front, to be honest with you, because mm. I want to see what Bosa and those guys are doing, because it starts there. How are you going like, to rattle Matt, Matthew Stafford like you have in past games? And when the Rams are so one-dimensional and they have no running game, it, it makes life a little bit easier for a defense. So um, it, it, it is amazing, though, how well they have that team's number, isn't it? And even in the NFC Championship game, they were dominating that game up until the last oh, eight man. minutes. It's just, it's just going back there for the first time since that game when I was there Sunday. I'm just like, I'm looking at that banner in the ceiling, going, <laughs> I cannot believe the yeah, Niners wow. blew that game because at that, that, whether they were going to get a banner or not, they should have beat that team last year. Well, Cam, they might have another shot at it this year. Well. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right. We'll appreciate it. Enjoy a few days off, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Yes, sir.